In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how Dat Boy took out Young Kiv in the Madden 23 Ultimate Kickoff Tournament. What's good, YouTube? My name's Cody. We do videos every single day that are designed to help us become better players. And one of the things that I like to do here on the channel is I love to study film. It's actually one of the things that I really, really enjoy doing um, is just studying what the best players in the world are doing, why they're doing it, trying to figure that out. And so in this video, I thought I would do a little bit of a film breakdown on Dat Boy and Young Kiv's game and just kind of talk through uh, some of the things that stuck out to me about Dat Boy, especially because he runs trips tight end. Trips tight end is probably my favorite offense in this game. Um, so I'm going to just uh, walk you through the game. We're going to jump into the into the YouTube stuff. Obviously, this is right off EA's channel if you want to check out EA. Um, of course, uh, you know, check them out. You probably already are aware of them. But I run trips tight end as well. So, you know, kind of cool to be able to watch somebody. We got two kind of meta offenses. We got bunch. We got trips. And then I believe that that boy, I think they might both be in 335 loop. I couldn't remember if Kid was in dollar. Um, you know, but really, uh, you know, really simple, uh, really, really kind of meta on both sides. Obviously, there's some nuances. And when you're watching the best players in the in the community play, you want to look at for the nuances. Obviously, there's a meta, right? And they are going to do what is most effective, right? Meta is the most effective tactics available. So we're going to learn some of that from these guys. But we're also going to learn how they take the meta to the next level with some of their key adjustments and things like that. So I wanted to break some of that stuff down. Dat Boy has been one of the best trips tied in players in Madden, at least for the last two years. And I think this year he's kind of back into his nickel 3-3, but he's running it differently than I think everybody else is. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead here. This is him on offense. His first drive really wasn't that great. You see Kiv is in this dollar defense. Um, let me just go ahead and we'll go back to first and 10 here and show you show you all this. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so uh, Kiv, uh, one of the best players of all time and uh, hasn't has this is his first live event, I believe, in two years. Uh, but Dad boy going to start out with an inside zone. I will say the runs out of trips this year are they're pretty good. They're probably I think the trips tight, especially after this latest patch, Trips tight end probably has the best shotgun running scheme. Now, that boy, interestingly enough, is in the Patriots playbook. Um, and he normally would be in Detroit because he loves to play x -Bot. So kind of interesting that in this year's game, I think because of how good or how good defense is, how important ball control is, all that stuff, he's running um, New England for the quick base, of course, uh, more than likely. So you see here, here's a nice little route combination. You're going to get a streak here to clear out any zones. He's looking for this corner route. This is his main read on the play. But what I like about his offense is he has this quick out in case it's man-to-man. -man. And then he's got a, uh, or a nice little, just kind of a nice little quick read here. And then he's got this slant. The slant's kind of his check down over the middle of the field. So the one thing, and I did a video on this, he did do a play action play to the left side. When you do a play action play to the opposite side of your quarterback's hand, um, so like when the running back is standing on the left and your quarterback's right-handed, the play action animation is significantly slower. And so you'll probably notice that some, because I know Dat Boy flips his trips, um, which is, you know, fine. Um, anyway, so here, Pat's YN, this is where we got the, the, the audible too much. He's not going to have a great first drive, but he will have a, a pretty good drive here in a minute uh, that we'll go over. One of the things I also want to talk about is his defense. His defense was very unique. Even though he was running 3-3, he was running it kind of differently than everybody else, uh, which we'll talk about uh, coming up here in a second. Uh, but anyway, here is 3rd uh, and 18. I think he ran a little quick out. Um, I think it was in Pat's YN. The out route out of Pat's YN is very consistent. Uh, probably one of the better man beating routes in the game, but Kiv is going to force a punt. And now he's going to be on defense. Now he is a nickel 3 3, but you'll notice that his 3 3 is significantly, significantly different um, than most people that you see online. So, um, and I think his defense is really the story of this game, what he's doing. So, what he has here, real quick, ability wise, look, if you look here, the only people that have abilities are his defensive linemen. He has edge threat, and I'm pretty, I'm not sure what all he has on him. I want to say he probably has edge threat and then something else, uh, but it's edge threat plus. And then he's got this guy right here that has an ability as well. So these are his three, he's building his defense primarily around this. This guy is the only guy that does have an ability. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably some kind of KO or acrobat or something, um, but anyway. 
Now, if you notice here, he's basically going to play cover three Mabel the whole game. Like, very, he's going to run cover three Cloud basically the entire game. Like, that's his main coverage call out of this, I believe. Or some variation of cover three Cloud, if, I, if, if you will. Um, that's what he's going to run. So he's going to basically have a double Mabel on the bunch side. And then he is going to have the outside third to help with the C route on the solo side and then an underneath zone as well. So you see, you're gonna see a lot of three-man rush. I want you to watch his three-man rush though. It's it's pretty significant, I think, uh, just to take a look at his, his three-man rush and why it was so effective this game. Uh, but yeah. So he's also a base aligning, which is something you don't always see, um, you know, but he's playing a lot of zone. Uh, he should have a third out here for this wheel. See, Kiv is thinking he's in cover two. See, there, there, um, that is pretty solid little D. His shed, the other thing about it is to beat a Mabel defense, especially deep, you're going to need time. And that's where his pass rush comes in. He's really banking on the fact that these edge threats are going to go crazy and this guy right here is going to go crazy. He's going to stand this gap, which should ensure a one-on-one -on -one for both outside guys. And there should be a double team right here. So that was a little bit of a blitz look. And there you see he gets the shed. And Kiv is like, what the heck am I playing? You know, kind of like trying to figure things out at this point. So again, this is just baseline nickel 3-3, double Mabel uh, for the most part. And then he's just basically usering in the middle of the field. He's got these edge threats on the outside. So Kiv's going to go to a tight set. See, there's the three. Tries his, his, He does hit this corner. And he's going to be able to get three out of this drive with a crazy field goal, I'm pretty sure. Um, so good job by Kiv getting three out of that. Now on offense here, you're going to see something kind of crazy. So again, Kiv is running dollar. And if you look at this, you're going to see that he's running dollar. I'm pretty sure that he is. Let's take a look. Maybe I'm surprised he's taking the song for his play. Yeah. So he's not base aligned. Okay. He's not base aligned. So if he's running, if he's running like, um, just kind of tuck that away. If he's running like spinner, that can cause some issues if you're not baselined. Okay. So anyway, here we go. Dab boy's going to go down. Just kind of check the run game. Uh, Dollar is the best run defense in the game. So, you know, it is what it is. It's not the best run defense in the game, but it is decent run defense. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, if you're playing a good player, you always want to try it. But now right here, you're going to see something. Okay. So. This is going to set up the next play, I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. We'll see right here. Um, anyway, you get this motion, and look at that. Do you see that right there? Let me back this up. This is really important. This is going to totally set up the next play. Um, so he runs, and then you'll see right here. Somehow I'm getting off here. There we go. Second and eight. Dang it. Come back. Yeah, second eight. So you saw right here. So he motions this guy in, and then this guy actually runs over here to guard the tight end. And I want you to watch who's guarding triangle on this. See how they flip? See how they flip there? This safety is now guarding this guy, and this guy is now guarding this guy. Now, Kev gets a great shed. He hits his tight end, and as you see, big, 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 big play. So he literally switched his man coverage on him, and it, it was one of the biggest plays in the game. Like, literally one of the biggest plays in the game. So based off of Kiv, based off of how Kiv was adjusting his defense, um, it was a huge, 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 huge play. Okay? Huge play. All right, so that boy back on defense here. You're going to see a lot of zone. That time he manned up somebody. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, little man glitch from my man Dat Boy. Absolutely incredible play. Because because basically what happens in stock, if you're in stock spinner, when you motion that slot, they flip right. They the safe the adjustment flips because they're over correcting to stop the. But because you can snap on the same side, now they're manned up on people they should never be manned up on. Now this is a little bit specific to certain coverages, certain plays, uh, but it is one of the biggest weaknesses in dollar this year. So something to kind of note. All right, so now you see Kiv starting to cut, or uh, this was the whole 
Like, we had to take 30 minutes to get this figured out. So we'll skip through this. Basically, Dab Boy just got stuck on his user, couldn't audible. Or wasn't, you know, whatever. And I think they actually gave Kit... Did they give him that? Ooh, I think they did. That's crazy. Yeah, he was pretty mad about that. He was like, that's a free three, which he was right. So let's just skip back over here. So I want to get back on Dab Boy because I want to show you how Kiv adjusts to this. So Kiv now knows, okay, he's got a man glitch. He's got a man swap glitch. And now he has to adjust to it, right? So it's going to completely... It's going to completely shift how Kiv has to play defense. Now, from this point, because it's 7-6, to six, um, Dat Boy is really in complete control because I'm pretty sure, or actually Kiv does get balled half, but Dat Boy has looked really good on defense. Like, his defense has basically been but don't break, double Mabel, and we're going to force him to have to work up the field, and we're going to have great sheds. But I want to show you, now Kiv, now look, do you see him change defenses? Now Kiv is in the 3-3 loop, so his dollar he's no longer in dollar. Now, if you know anything about the game at this point, 3-3 loop compared to dollar, a completely different style of blitzing. 3-3 loop is a little bit more um, kind of random. It's a little bit more passive pressure, um, more delayed pressure oftentimes, especially if you can pick up the disengages. So it, 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 it completely shifts how that boy can now run combos and routes that are going to take advantage of this so now he has more time in the pocket here trying to hit his corner great aggressive catch this is something that i tried to talk a lot about in the beginning of this year that aggressive catch is very consistent very consistent you're clicking on the receiver you're going to swerve him around and you're going to bring him back to the ball and you're going to find that that's actually a fairly consistent thing against man to man nice little doubles in sale little little quick table route back you know, just kind of mixing up his play call, and he's three to three uh, for a hundred yards and a touchdown. So he's looking a lot better right now. Kiv is kind of staying in this man-to-man -man meta, and that boy is showing why trips tight end is so valuable and, and what it can really do um, to someone that's going to stay in man. So here we got the C right over here. I love this combo. Um, you're going to see here. I think he does. Does he block his tight end right here? He's going to motion over this corner. So he's got a high low on the left. Um, actually, I think he's going to take a timeout. Okay. But yeah, I mean, you're seeing that the value of motion within trips and even U trips is good for this. But ability to mess it with, with stuff from motion is really interesting. Uh, but anyway, back to the play here. Let's see what he's going to run. I think he's running uh, verticals. And let's see if he motions. He's got Mixon out here. Um, that's actually kind of a crazy... It's actually kind of a thing this year. Mixon has actually been pretty good in that, in that position. So that was uh, Pat's YN, and there was the skinny post. So if you think about it, Kiv is shading outside to stop the corner routes or to play better against corner routes. So what you want to do is you want to have a skinny post that goes inside um, so that you can have the inside leverage because the corner is playing an outside shade. There's nobody in the middle of the field to help him, and so that's why Pat, Pat's YN is a really good little play uh, in this formation. Right there, not quite sure. I think, I don't know, a little offsize free play. But, yeah, it, and, and, and here we are. If that boy gets seven on this drive with how he's looked on defense, like, this is huge. So, this is a huge red zone possession here. Uh, he loves Pat's YN in the red zone, looks like, here. A little motion over zig route. Um, I don't love that zig. Let me see if it even gets any separation. Yeah, it didn't. But, boom, that should have been a touchdown. So, that was actually him. He highballed it. A lot of players this year like to high ball in the red zone. I personally really don't. Um, but but the reasoning is because they're going to try to play it a little bit more safe. Had he just like thrown that normal, that was an easy touchdown. But because he high balled it, he said it in the broadcast. I mean, he completely screwed it up. So here, this is a great little concept. We got two corner routes going to the back of the end zone. And we got little underneath routes underneath them. And, you know, Kib does a good job. I'm pretty sure he's still shading outside. So Dat Boy needs, I think Dat Boy was anticipating, okay, I just threw the post two or three times in a row. Now Kib is going to go with an outside shade, or he's going to go with an inside shade, which should then open up my corner routes. Did not happen at all. Okay. So just kind of interesting uh, to note here. Going to doubles and sale. Hits the table route. That's a crazy good read. Like, that table route is probably one of the more underrated routes in the game this year. Like, the way that it actually uh, just gets really good separation. So, anyway, that, that table route was a great a great little check down, uh, in my opinion. 
All right, and then let's see here, a little inside zone. Let's see, does he get three? Does he get seven in the strap? Just kind of running. Yeah, he does. So he audible down. Oh, he doesn't right there. Crazy. And then this play, he does get in. So he goes second and goal. And then third and goal, he just comes out in goal line. And I think he just runs it in and gets it's a, a huge score. Uh, one thing I will point out is notice how the best players in the world in the red zone are running the ball. Uh, this year's game is different than last year's game. Last year, you could pretty much pass the ball every play, and there was no consequence. This year's game, you can stop things. So you have to be strategic, um, you know, with how you attack. All right, so back on Kiv. So Kiv is trying to hit this corner route out of deep corner. Um, and he actually crossed man that really well there. So that boy is kind of throwing different things at Kiv with cross manning um, from the safeties. One of the real benefits of three three five normal is the fact that you could cross man anybody in the field. Actually, he has double or nothing. I ah all right. So this is something. Let me see if we can actually. Let me see if we can pause this. So you see here, this guy is going to be cross manned, and then. You know, just kind of a different look, kind of helping on the late ladder part of that corner route. And then I want to show you something with uh, his abilities. I think this is really important. Let me see. So Kiv's going to show us here, right here. Right here. I'm just going to try it. There we go. Okay. Uh, he has inside stuff on his DT. Unpredictable there. He has double or nothing on his defensive ends. Okay. These are double or nothings. Okay. So just kind of an FYI. Um, something to think about going forward. Uh, I have a really good setup in the Patreon where we teach you how to use Double or Nothing to its fullest extent. But really good abilities this year, Double or Nothing. And then you also have, um, looks like he has like some mid zones. Oh, interesting. So he has Double or Nothing on LT and Edge Threat over here. So the reasoning behind that is because I'm pretty sure that uh, Edge Threat on LT is 4 AP, whereas Double or Nothing is only 3. So that could be a reasoning behind that. Uh, but just something, you know, kind of interesting. And then looks like Moss has flat zone KO. So those are the abilities that Dabble is running defensively. But you'll notice if you watch, like, if you just watch his defensive line, they're going crazy. Like, they're, they're getting sheds almost every play. There's another instant shed win. Where's he going to go? Like, he can't even throw a flat route. He literally has no time to even throw a flat route with that. And that was the rolled double Mabel out of cover three cloud. Really good adjustment from Dat Boy. Now we're in a third and 10 situation. And I feel like, you know, Dat Boy was actually a lot more dominant in this victory than I think even the final score is going to show, um, especially when we get into the second half and just how his defense just really did a good job. Another thing to quickly point out is he is not pressing his corners. See that? That is something that is people are starting to understand that when you press your corners this year, especially in zone, it's it's not it's not the move. Okay, just that's been something I've been trying to test recently. Um, but anyways, so there's the cross man on that slot. But now this is a great call by Kiv. So he's been trying to really key in on this guy. So Kiv is trying to now hit this guy. He uses this as basically a bait route. And then he's trying to hit this post, which he should right there, wide open. Great read, great dot. So now Dat Boy, you know, now again, Dat Boy was kind of keying in on the slot receiver in bunch, which is probably the most important receiver to stop. The beauty of deep corner is, you know, it, it, it does a really good job of coming back over the middle with certain route combinations like what you just saw. All right, so first and 10, ball on the 23. I believe that Kiv is in Pittsburgh Steelers bunch, by the way which we do have a Pittsburgh Steelers Bunch ebook. Now, this is a very interesting call. Um, basically, what he's looking for is a crosser. So he runs a crosser, slant, and then he's got a little flat route and a pull route right there. Watch this. So, you know, he does end up being able to take the scramble, but that's more of a man-beating combo. I mean, it does beat zone two, but that boy's not been running man. Like, he's been maybe individually manning one receiver up every now and then. I uh, just kind of surprised to see Kiv Colt go with something like that. Um, trying to kind of think through why he would have called that, but um, you know, it's fine. I mean, it worked out well. He the problem is like that boy could put all of his energy into the crosser because the slant wouldn't get into any soft spot um, once because there was I don't know just just kind of my thought, but anyway. Um, so here he's going to go to tight. 
This tight doubles out of Pittsburgh is actually really good. It's got a lot of sharp corner routes. It's got motion on the C route. It's actually a really good red zone dot. So basically, if he runs man, he's got the C route, but the C route will also pull out a lot of zones. And with this streak right here, if he's running cover two, the C route will be open back in here. And if he's running cover three, cover four, the running back should be open in this little soft spot in the seam. So it's actually a really good play. Um, had his tight end, but it would have been a tight throw. So he's gonna just throw it away. And that's gonna bring up second and goal. So you see Dat Boy's basic philosophy. Just basically, I'm gonna to try to hold people to three. Like, I'm going to try to make him work up and down the field, and I'm going to try to hold him to three. That's kind of his core, which is a great way to play defense this year, especially with how good sheds are uh, and with how um, hard it is to consistently, like, consistently take the underneath uh, for a lot of people. It's a really good defense. So now he's going to base a line down here in the red zone. I think that's because he's probably going cover four drop. I want to say. Yeah. So yeah, really good D. And, and cover four drop, for those of you that don't know in the red zone, cover four drop is really powerful because those outside quarter zones will basically really blanket anything in the back corners. So like this verticals route, stuff like that. So we'll see what he goes to here. Should be cover four though. Yeah, throws it away and he's gonna take his three. All right, so he's gonna take his three. So now Kib gets another drive here. Um, First play, just again taking sacks. You're just seeing that with Dad Boy being able to use her in this little box, and the way zones kind of slowly drift to the sidelines this year, as opposed to like super fast jet to the sidelines, some of these middle routes they're just not there. And like, look at him now. I'm kind of honestly surprised that Kib goes to tight as much as he does because it's clearly not the move against the zone. Like, the way that that boy is playing zone with his zone drops and his Mabel. Um, you know, it's kind of in, just kind of interesting. So here, this is more of a traditional flood. It's got the slant, good read. And see, it's just, I don't know why. I feel like because man has been such a strong meta in this year's game, Kiv came very prepared for man. And that boy's running zone drops. Like, and so because of that, you know, he's able to take away a lot of Kiv's big plays. He's got to go to more routes, combos, like what he just showed you with a very nice little flood over the middle of the field. Uh, so we'll see what he does here. But he, he's got to, um, you know, he's got, so here it looks like he's going for a little bomb over here on the right, or back to that deep corner. That was a crazy good read. And he got, he, he didn't catch it, but that was a crazy good read. I want to back that up and show you this. So if you watch here on this play, let me back it up just a, just a little bit more back. Um, so if you watch on this play, he's going to put his running back on a streak and his solo receiver on a C route. Now he's banking on the fact that I'm pretty sure that boy, this is one of the byproducts of being backed off coverage too, by the way. So there's there's pros and cons to both. But if you watch here, watch these safeties. See how he mainly backs this guy up? Watch this safety right here on the left. This will tell you kind of the coverage. But if you watch here, so if you look right here, he's rolling his coverage over here this way. So this streak is going to be a clear out route for the running back. And you'll see this third watch right Right there, if you notice, this third is drifting to the middle, and it opens up this little pocket for the C route. It's actually a really good throw. It's a tight throw, but it's a really good, really good read, really good throw by Kiv. Unable to, unable to make the catch, unfortunate. Um, you know, but that was actually a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid route combination out of bunch uh, that you guys uh, should take away from Kiv here. All right, so motion out second and 10, motion out deep corner. So, again, this backside slant. And, again, I think this should be a backside smart right at the end or something. Like, because he's just not running man-to-man, -man, you know. Um, out route covered, corner route covered, D-line pick six. And that's pretty much, I mean, that's going to really start to kind of push it into a direction. Um that boy's offense really didn't have to be that good. One thing I will say that I have noticed about edge threads, double or nothings, D-line picks, all that stuff, I think momentum actually, you see here, see how much momentum he is? I think momentum actually has a significant effect on how his sheds are working, how good his sheds are going to be, or how good his D-line picks are going to be. Just kind of an FYI for you guys. Um, something to think about for sure. But, you know, from here on, I mean, he's going to, it's, it's kind of the same stuff 
And honestly, like his defense was so strong that he didn't have to play offense. Like he only he had one play on offense so far that was like super powerful. Um, that he did have a he did have that one drive. I guess he did go down and get seven. But really, offensively, he hasn't he hasn't had to do much. His defense has really just carried him through the second half. Now it doesn't mean his offense can't. Right? We just haven't. He hasn't had. To, he hasn't. We haven't seen it. So here it sets up a little little loop pressure off that left side and this was honestly like one of the reasons i wanted to do this video that boy in madden 21 when he won against blocky uh the dolphins championship he ran basically this defense this 3-3 normal uh you know drop a lot of coverage out of it that was kind of what he was doing in madden 21 and here he is running it, the basic defense again. He's running it differently for sure. But, he, you know, he's really kind of coming with that same strategy of I'm going to make him work on offense, you know. And Kiv, really Kiv beat himself more than Dap. I mean, Dap Boy's obviously won this game and clearly is the victorious player in this in this matchup. But, like, that call right there on fourth, and I, I don't know about that call, like, there was just some things in this game that if they, if Kiv hadn't, I just feel like he beat himself a lot. I just feel like he beat himself a lot in this game. There was some fluke and all that, and but I mean, Kiv, Kiv probably asked him. He'd probably tell you he wishes he could maybe not call counter on fourth down or like. There's certain things that he's trying. He he, you know, he probably he probably would want back in this game. So at this point, uh, Dat Boy is basically going to chew clock like. He feels like if he gets three, he wins. Now, there is a dot, I think, after the run here. He has one one big dot. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah, third down. Here we go. This is probably it. Third and six. So, if he gets his first down, he's basically going to be effectively in field goal range or very close to it. Watch what he does. Motion over here. So, again, C route. On this side, we've got the high-low over here for zone. Really good route combo. And he hits his corner route. Or no, hits the C route. Really nice. So, yeah, I mean, nothing crazy, honestly. But just the ability, and then from here on out, he's going to basically, he, he's basically saying he won. Because he knows that Kiff can't score fast. Based on the way that he's playing defense, Kiff can't score fast. Kiff hasn't scored a touchdown. And... You see that he's just going to kind of close this game out, um, you know, basically from a clock perspective. So, Kiv, you're seeing here, Kiv is having to work every single, and he's doing a good job at this point. He starts to really do, he actually starts to really move uh, fairly well towards the end of this game. Now, obviously, Dat Boyd's playing a little bit more passive defense and all that, um, you know, but you're, you'll start to see, like, you know, he just kind of closes the game out. Uh, but again, that is, you know, Dat Boy versus Kiv. Let me know if you like these videos. Um, I'm going to do another one for sure. I'm going to talk about uh, Henry and Jack Oregon. So I think that was actually a lot better game than the score might indicate. Um, actually, I might do deep. I don't know. I'm going to probably do at least one more, maybe two more. But if you guys enjoy this content, I will do more. But that is a film room on Dat Boy and Young Kiv. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next video.